Hi guys, Commander Cockings here, and yes, the title is right. I'm doing an Eagle Moss review today, which is unusual for me, but I got this in the post. I really just wanted to video my first reaction to it because you know, guys, I'm such a big fan. That's right, we are looking at Orville ships. Now, these are the regular sized, but today, and these are awesome. Really, though, the biggest Orville possible. You guys know I've been a fan of the design ever since it was revealed. Uh, I've even used it in bits and bobs animation work, you know, fan versions to kind of get a sense of how nice it flows in 3D space. And here is the uh, Orville Igamos XL for 40 or 50 pounds, 49.99 on the UK store, which is a bit more expensive than the BSG ships, but the same as the normal Trek XL. Okay, diddly little magazine. Diddly. I know Stuart prefers the small ones they fit into the boxes, although originally you've got the bigger ones for the normal magazine. But, uh, obviously, real renders the real CGI. Some orthos. I've never seen these before, so. More of a teasing book than a behind the scenes booklet. In the actual full book that Orville released, and you give a whole lot of information about the design. This is more just about the general ship itself. But really, do buy the. Uh, the box, you know, the collection. The magazine, no, you do not. So, Ooh, lighter than I thought. But I think a little bigger than I thought. Okay. So it's funny. As soon as you actually get one of these, you realise how <laughs> how long it is. It doesn't feel that way. As soon as you go three quarter. So this is obviously the big one. Feels good metal-wise. Lots of plastic, but hefty metal. In terms of detailing, the early versions of the models weren't as detailed as they could have been. They went for the very TOS style where the hull was smooth, except the, sort of the, the very distinct groovy panels. So it does kind of have that feel. More, I mean, the whole Orville does feel more like Star Trek, so it would make sense. But you get this nice sort of gentle, gentle hull feel. In terms of detailing, you have all the nice main big bits on the top, bottom... Some, although not a ton. Does have the Ford launchers, that's good. Of course you have a uh, 20th Century Fox logo, because why not? I always wondered this, you have a big bright Orville registry and yet it's not on both sides, which is confusing. It kind of has the Enterprise J effect a little bit with the... Uh, it feels as if those bottom pylons aren't connected, but they are, they just kind of have that floating feel. Although the, the shuttle bay is a bit... The light cluster, I think there's actually literally lights there. It's kind of a, it doesn't really pop as much as I think it probably should do. But it's fun when you can now, like, you know, when you get a physical ship in 3D, in real 3D, I work in other 3D, you can now suddenly go around it and look at all those angles that you thought, and it is weird, there is, you never really think of there being a hole between these two, these two modules. But that's why I believe where the pulse cannons came out of those bits. But yeah, I like it. This will definitely one I keep on sort of the desk on the shelf. Because what an unusual design. The fact that Orville, the Orville team was able to create another distinct shape and profile it's quite impressive considering. Kind of has a Galaxy Quest vibe. Kind of TOS vibe slightly. Uh, is cool. But why don't we do a quick comparison with the standard issue and we'll see the differences. Uh, and we'll see how the details and such compare. So in terms of comparing the XL the uh, L, or the standard, very much smaller. Although, considering what you're getting here, with the fact the seam lines are in the exact same place as you can see the uh, harsh seam lines at the top and bottom, the details feel to me remarkably similar, as in the way they compress them down is vibe-wise extremely the same. I've seen other Eagle Moss models where it kind of loses something when it compresses down, but this actually maintains Pretty much everything. I mean, it changes a few of the details. But that is some very small paint. Very, very small paint arrangement on that. Uh, although this one, you know, is tiny. Um, you know, palm of your hand sort of shit. But it's cute. Definitely, definitely cute. But I mean, you know, always go for the, uh, the big one. To make an impression on your desk or on your shelf or something. Um... But yeah, I actually like it quite a lot. I do, I, like I said, it's still surprising how long it is. And the fact that it has that weird inner 
in an angle as well. Very strange. But, I mean, uh, hopefully, um, going to be an iconic design. And I know in Season 3 we're getting a refurb version of the 3D model. It's getting more detail, more movie-like. I know we're all waiting for Season 3, but that should be really fun with, you know, uh, rooms inside the windows, etc, etc. Uh, so, yeah. Really happy to add this to my collection. You guys know I'm a big collector of the Star Trek, the BSG, and the soon-to-be Stargate, etc. That's the fault of that. Um, but as always, guys, do collect the Eagle Moss if you'd like. They are the only ones to provide an extensive range of ships from multiple universes, including, you know, they're going to do Picard, Lower Decks, they've done Discovery, and ones, you know, even concept models, which is absolutely incredible they've done. So they are the go-to people, and definitely worth your support, guys. And, and you know, could always be more detailed, but... It's one of those things where you then look at the miniature of the show and you say, well, that at that point, just paint detailing. And, you know, I'm not sure how you'd even paint that subtle of paint detailing onto just a clean surface. So it is, you know, better, I think, to be this sort of whatever. Oh, I think they're missing... Yeah, because they're scaling, they're missing a window set here. So a few little... They could be a uh, bit more detailed. With a couple, like, basically, this back area could do a little more fine-tuned detail. Um, but, I mean, it does kind of get hidden. You know, do that, and it gets hidden instantly. So yeah, guys, if you'd like to buy this, you can go onto the online store today and order one using the code TREKYARDS at checkout. We'll get you some money off, and then if you get money off, you might as well buy many, yeah, many, many, and yeah, BSG and Star Trek and all the different things. Uh, sorry, I just like the ship. But yeah, get it if you want to. It's the right size, and who's interested, whoever's interested, I got 4223A slash A. Slash A. Oh, well, there you go, guys. A little bit of a random one, but my first reaction, you can see my I'm enjoying it. So, uh, have a great day, Christmas, and uh, go by Orville. Because <laughs> it's actually really nice to physically have one at a really good size. All right. Till then, I'm Connor Coggins. See you next time, guys.